But who are these foxes and hedgehogs? Well, there's an essay by Isaiah Berlin that came out about 45 years ago in which he draws on a fragment of Greek poetry from 2,500 years ago by the Greek warrior poet Archilochus, uh, which is roughly translated as, the fox knows many things, but the hedgehog knows one big thing. Um, and he, dis he defines the ideal type hedgehog as uh, an expert or a professional or a thinker who relates everything to a single central vision in terms of which all that they say has significance. So you could be a Marxist hedgehog, or you could be a libertarian hedgehog. You could be a boomster hedgehog, or you could be a doomster Malthusian hedgehog. Uh, you could be a realist hedgehog, you could be an idealist hedgehog. Um, the important thing is that you approach history, you approach current events in a deductive frame of mind. You have certain first principles, and you try as hard as you can to absorb as many different facts into the framework of those first principles. Now that might sound like rigidity, but if you think about it for a minute, from a philosophy of science point of view, it also is parsimony. That is what scientists are supposed to do. They're supposed to explain as much as possible with as little as possible. So we'll come back to that, that value tension in a moment. Um, the ideal type hedgehogs, Berlin defined this way, he said they pursue many ends, often unrelated and even contradictory, they entertain ideas that are centrifugal rather than centripetal without seeking to fit them into or exclude them from any one all-embracing inner vision. Those are the foxes. So foxes and hedgehogs. Uh, foxes are skeptical of big theories. Uh, you're, you're not going to find very many foxes who are true believers. Uh, and interestingly, the foxes who did the best of my forecasting exercises were the least enthusiastic about participating and they are the most diffident about their ability to forecast uh, because they really do th see history as in, 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 in substantial measure as quite, as quite unpredictable. Uh, whereas the hedgehogs were more enthusiastic about it, they, they tend to be more enthusiastic about extending their favorite theories into new domains and they tend to be more confident in their ability to predict. Now this is some, some, some data which I'll just go over very quickly. If, if you're on the, per the perfect diagonal, the straight line here represents perfect calibration. So the, whereas the, uh, the curvy lines represent actual groups of human beings making thousands of predictions. And these are aggregations of that. And the key thing to note here is that one of the lines strays further from the perfect diagonal than all the other lines. So the line that strays furthest is the line in which hedgehogs are making long-term predictions within the domains of their expertise. Uh, <laughs> Whereas the line that's closest to the perfect diagonal is foxes making short-term predictions within the domain of their expertise. Um, now there's an argument that, that started to unfold about whether the, fox, whether the foxes were doing better than the hedgehogs, not because they're more perceptually accurate, but rather because the foxes are, excuse the pun, foxes were chickens. The foxes were un unwilling to say anything much more than maybe. So the foxes were clinging around the subjective probability point of 0.5. Right. So one way to test that, if that were true, then the foxes should not be as discriminating as the hedgehogs. The hedgehogs should, may, may lose on calibration, but they should win on discrimination.